Good afternoon. We are joined by Dr. Flip Stander. The very first sort of a question, a couple of questions that I've got. Uh, but the first one is like, what are the desert lions and what is the differentiation? And why are they in the desert? If I could, if we could just pre walk us through that part. Yeah, Alpha, look, the, the, the desert adapted lions um, in Namibia are, are unique um, for the species. Uh, they live in a habitat uh, uh, and, and exert behavior that is, is not seen, uh, you know, in, in lion populations elsewhere. Now, um, the, the Namib Desert is, is a really important ecological system. It's the oldest desert um, and it stretches about 100 kilometers inland from the sea all along Namibia's coast. And uh, it's a really unique place, um, you know, uh, incredible species that have evolved here, uh, plants and animals. Um, and the lions uh, that uh, occupy the area um, are very important to, to Namibia currently. Um, it's the only place in the world where lions um, live in such extreme desert environment and that they also um, go onto the coastline. Um, it's the only place where you can see freelanding wild lions um, on a beach. Mm. Now, it's unique um, uh, because the coastlines throughout the world have been occupied by people, you know, through the millennia. It's a productive area. Um, and as a result, uh, wildlife has essentially disappeared from most of the, the coastal areas as a result of human occupation uh, for millions of years. Um, uh, the reason why the, the, the Namibian desert adapted lions are unique is because the, the Namib desert has essentially occupied that area, so people have not lived there. Um, and as a result, we get a lot of natural recurring wild species that occupy those areas. Um, now, we do believe that lions used to occur throughout the Namibian coast, uh, the Namib desert. Um, but uh, you know, people have settled in the areas and, uh, and their numbers have, have been reduced. Um, as early as the 1930s, uh, there are records of lions occurring uh, through that area. They only really became known to us um, in the late 70s, uh, when the Skeleton Coast Park was basically established and, and the rangers working in that area picked up that there were lions you know, lions on the beach, and you know, it was, a, it was an incredible sort of uh, discovery. Um, those lions very soon disappeared. Uh, I started a small study uh, on them in, in the 80s with the Ministry of, in, of Environment, uh, but very soon after we'd marked about five animals, uh, they were all killed uh, by people that lived um, almost in the Skeleton Coast Park area, l farming with livestock. Um, you know, these are people that uh, had very few uh, head of livestock, few goats and, and, and a few donkeys and cattle. And when the lions attacked their livestock, they defended their livelihood, which they could do legally. Um, but as a result, they, they killed the lions. So uh, by the end of the 1980s, uh, we thought that the desert adapted lions had all gone, gone extinct. Um, but that was not to be. A, a small pocket of them had survived in a very mountainous area just south of Sesfontein. Um, and then a few big changes happened uh, politically uh, and also from an environmental point of view. Namibia gained its independence. Um, and, uh, and suddenly the local communities in the area were given the rights to, to utilize the land. The forming of conservancies was, was very important. And at the same time, we, we had really good rainfall, a uh, number of years of really good rainfall. So the wildlife numbers were allowed to increase. Uh, at the same time, tourism started happening. The political environment was, was ready for that now. Uh, so it's a culmination of all those factors that came together that essentially allowed um, the, the natural wildlife of the northern Namib, the Damaraland area as we know it, uh, to proliferate, supported by tourism and communal conservancies, you know, so the, the combination of all of that was, a, was that favorable conditions. Um, I was very lucky uh, to, to have started this lion project in that time. Um, and we essentially were able to document uh, the lion population having been reduced to you know, about 20 individuals. To, to basically grow and expand from, from that relatively small nucleus uh, to a population size of 
an estimated 130 to 150 today. Um, they've expanded from that small nucleus area south of Sesfontein to occupy an area of way over 50,000 square kilometers, going south of, of the Uhap River to, to as far as the, the Warasip River. So that expansion was essentially allowed because, you know, there was suitable or sufficient wildlife, um, and, but tourism played an enormous role. It did not, however, reduce um, the, the conflict between people and, and lions over livestock. That is still uh, today uh, our biggest uh, um, conservation problem and it is also the biggest limiting factor of the lion population. So we, we are still very much battling and, and searching for, for ways to live with the lions. Um, and, and that, as I say, remains to be one of the, the biggest problems today. If I can um, go a little bit into detail with the Desert Lion Project itself, you know, what is the Desert Lion Project and why has it been done? You know? okay. well, look, the Desert Lion Project uh, started uh, in, in the mid-80s um, when I, I was a young ranger uh, in Itasha and, and I went to the Skeleton Coast Park to, to do some work there and I saw a lioness on the beach. Uh, you know, that was 1982 and I mean that that uh, the impact of that sighting has never left me. I mean, it's just a, such an incredible thing to see. And uh, it was a dream really to be able to work on, on those lines. And um, at that time I did, I, I started a small project. We call it, I think, five lines, but that, those are the lines that were then all were, were killed during conflict incidents. And when the population recovered, and that was sort of 1997, that's when I started this project. Uh, and because it was like a dream for so many years. Um, and I just felt that, um, you know, these lions are just so unique um, in, in the area that they live. The, the behavior that they, that they exhibit, uh, the areas that they live in, uh, is just so fascinating. So um, it's been a lifelong um, sort of of passion. Uh, initially, I, I wanted to be able to, to, to understand the basics I still don't understand the basics. You know, it takes so long. It is, it's, it's such a complex problem in, a, in such a difficult area that it essentially became a, almost like a lifelong long study. And I don't really see it ever, um, you know, we ever stopping mm -hmm. the work. Yeah, I, I would foresee even after, you know, my time with them um, is over, I would imagine that it would continue. The, the, the value of lions to, to Namibia and the tourism uh, is, uh, uh, industry is so important that I would, I would think it, it, it will continue. Yes. And also the conflict yeah. uh, situation is, is serious. So uh, I think we are laying uh, platforms now and, and we, we've, we've put systems in place and structures um, that, uh, that really can con continue um, after all of us mm. are gone. Um, and, and I think uh, the, the, the government, the Namibian government, the Ministry of Environment does see it that way as well. And, and you know, I think the most of the tourism industries too. So I do think we, we are paving the way for a, for a continuation of, of work on lions that will carry on for many, many decades. Okay. And also just to understand a little bit more is like how, how is this uh, the research different to other researches that has been done about lions in other areas and what is the uh, the profound information that has been inside that has been gathered. Yeah. yeah. Look, in a way, the, the, this project is no no different to to lion projects and studies elsewhere. Uh, no different in the sense of the of the fundamentals mm. of of the scientific approach and the methodology and, and all of that's much the same. Mm. Uh, what's different here, here is that it takes a much bigger effort and much longer to 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 gather even the smallest bit of information. So it just requires this enormous effort. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and it takes just so much longer. Um, the information that does come out, however, um, does contribute quite uh, significantly to our understanding of lions because it's, it's looking at lion behavior and, and lion ecology in an extreme environment. Uh, and it's often been said to, to understand a species well enough, you have to understand the extremities. 
Um, so, and, so studying a, a, a lions or any species in, in like say, the, the, their normal habitat. So with lions that would say in savannah habitat, Serengeti, or any of those sort of well-known places. Um, you you can you can get a grasp a, you know a good understanding, but it's only when you know these extremes, the extreme desert, the extreme sort of uh, um, rainforest, uh, um, uh, wooded areas, marshes, that type of extreme habitats. What the animals have to do to be able to survive mm -hmm. there, uh, and I think that provides us. Uh, it contributes to the broader understanding of how the species survives, mm -hmm. because it is so extreme. Yeah. Okay. I think one of the most important things that has come out of, of the, uh, this particular project is the is the the need and the value of long term uh, studies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the investment that's made, um, uh, you know, like for example with the lions, once you get to know a lion, you mark a lion with a collar, you follow that lion throughout its whole life. And with females, when they give birth, you monitor the youngsters and you build a family tree and, and you basically continue with a, with a long-term study. Um, and that's the, really the only way we will, we will get to the bottom and, and grasp a understanding of, of lions living in such a complex environment. You know, quite honestly, if I had to think back 10 years ago, um, I stood up at uh, international wildlife conferences and spoke about the lions with great authority. If I look back at the things I said and what I thought I knew, I'm a little bit embarrassed. You know, because I've discovered such amazing things subsequently that I had no idea of then. So I think uh, it's a humbling uh, experience that we, we, will, we never know what they're doing. We can only know more. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore it is so important to continue with systematic uh, uh, data collection and a really good sound science. Because that's our foundation of understanding. Um, the lions, understanding enough to implement effective conservation strategies, like mm. dealing with a human wildlife conflict and, and the things that we have been put, been able to put in place, is only really possible because of the the years and years of collecting, mm. you know, that information and, and getting that basic understanding.